With CSS Grid Layout, the grid itself within its container, as well as the grid items, can be positioned on the container using the following four properties. Justify content, align content, justify items, and align items. These properties are all part of the CSS box alignment module, and they can define a standard way to position elements with either Flexbox or CSS Grid. You'll recognize some of these properties from working with Flexbox. When the entire grid is smaller than the space for the grid container, we use Justify Content to justify the grid along the row axes. You can use the following values, Start, End, Center, Stretch, Space Around, Space Between, and Space Evenly. The Align Content property is used to align the grid content along the column axes. It's like aligning the tracks. The Justify Content and Align Content properties distribute extra space in the container. Let's take a look at how this affects actual web pages. Here's the page that I'll be working with. And as you can see, I have a div with a class of container that contains eight items. And I'm repeating this twice. In regards to my starting CSS, I have defined a display of grid and I'm using grid template columns of creating three columns that are 80 pixels wide. I have also defined a width on the overall container as well as a height. In order to show you how this works, I'm going to need to create some auto rows as well. So what I'll do is I'll target both the C1 and C2 containers, and we're going to add grid auto rows, and we'll set this to 60 pixels. If I refresh, you can see that now the items are only taking up 60 pixels of space. So in essence, what I have done is I have reduced the size of the explicit grid. Without defining the grid auto rows, then the items are going to take up as much horizontal space as they can. But in order for me to show you the justify content and the align content, we will need to create a grid that is not taking up all of the horizontal space. Now that we have that situated, let's target container one, and I'm going to use the justify content property. We'll go ahead and we'll set this to center to begin with. If I save my page and I refresh, you can see that now all of the items are horizontally centered. It in essence is like aligning all of the column tracks to the center of the container. As I mentioned, this will only work when the grid is smaller than the container. The rest of the justify content values are going to be similar to what we looked at when we worked with Flexbox. We have start, which will move those column tracks to the starting of the container. We have end, which would move them to the end of the container. And then we have space around, space between, and space evenly. The align content property does similar things, but it will align the grid content along the column axes. If we go ahead and set the align content to center, you can see that now all the items are going to align in the vertical center of the container. It is as if we're taking all of the rows and aligning them together. We have all of the same sorts of values that we just looked at on justify content. If I set this to space around, for instance, you can see how now the row tracks get distributed amongst the parent item. In addition to these properties, we also have a justify item property, which is used to justify the grid items along the row axes. This will in essence align all of the items within the track spacing. Similarly, we have align items, which you can use to align the grid items along the column axes. Again, this is going to align all the items within the track. Let me show you what this looks like in our actual web page. In my HTML, I have some additional code that I had commented out. I'm simply going to select this and uncomment it. It in essence is the exact same code that we were just using. The only difference is I'm not using the grid auto rows. So the actual rows are just going to simply take up whatever available space is there within the container. What we'll do now is we're going to target the container three. 
and I'm going to specify my justify items and we'll go ahead and set this to center. If we refresh, you can see that the content appears to be shrunk. It also appears differently. If I turn on the grid overlay, you can see how the content is being positioned in the horizontal center of the actual grid cell. So justify items is going to allow us to change the position of the items within the cells. If I change this to end and we refresh, now you can see that all of the content is going to move to the end of that particular cell. Other possible options are going to be start or we have the justify items stretch property, which is actually the default property. So this is how the items are going to look by default. Let's move on and look at the align items. For this, I'm going to target my container four and we will use align items and align items takes the same values as justify items. So if we go ahead and specify start and we refresh, if you look down at my last container, you can see that the items are being positioned at the top of the cells. And that's because I've used start. If we change this to center, they will move to the middle of the cells. And of course, end would push them to the bottom of cells or stretch is the default. As you can see, these properties allow you to control how the items are going to appear and align within the grid.